Hello everyone. Welcome to the Cluster API Provider AWS Project Update. I am Seda Savaş. I'm a software engineer at VMware Tanzu team. Uh, I am one of the maintainers of Cluster API Provider uh, AWS Project. Uh, I've been working on this project over a year now. Hello everyone. My name is Richard Case. I'm a tech lead at Weaveworks. I'm currently working on bare metal Cluster API based uh, products and solutions for Weaveworks. I'm also a cluster API provider, AWS maintainer. And this is our agenda for today. Uh, we will give you an overview of cluster API CAPI and cluster API provider uh, AWS CAPA. They are both SIG cluster uh, lifecycle sub projects. Uh, then we are going to mention about some uh, new features in CAPA and do a quick demo. Um, to give you an idea about how all this uh, works together. Then we will talk about our roadmap and last we will mention uh, how you can get involved as a contributor. So uh, what's Cluster API and what does it do for us? Uh, Kubernetes lifecycle uh, management uh, is complicated with day one and day two operations and Cluster API brings uh, Kubernetes style declarative APIs to simplify this management. Uh, it manages uh, Kubernetes clusters again by Kubernetes clusters, and you see the cluster API logo on the right. Uh, it is a, a reference to Tartus all the way down because we are using Kubernetes clusters to manage Kubernetes. Uh, in general, CAPI brings some automation to the management of the clusters in terms of creation, uh, scaling, repair, upgrades, and deletion. Uh, you can create uh, your Kubernetes clusters on either on-prem data centers or uh, cloud providers, and each infrastructure provider has its own way of provisioning resources, uh, like virtual machines, load balancers, etc. And uh, Cluster API is infrastructure agnostic itself to support uh, these various infrastructure providers. It acts as a building block and provides interface for providers so that uh, providers can implement these contracts and get plugged into Cluster API so that uh, users can provision clusters on them. Uh, currently, we have uh, provider implementations for uh, all the uh, logos you see on the screen, like AWS, Azure, vSphere. And if you if you uh, want to see the whole list, uh, you can check the link below. Uh, if, if you do not find your provider in the list, you can always build your own provider. There is a section in the cluster API book uh, that shows the contracts for adding a new provider. And I'm going to uh, no, next slide, please. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Kepi uh, has lots of cool features. If you want to know uh, more in detail, uh, there's a deep dive session on Friday. Uh, I suggest you, you see that session if you want to know more. And now I'm handing over to Rich to talk about uh, Cluster API architecture details. So this diagram represents it, the, the high level architecture of how Cluster API works. There are three main portions to it. On the left-hand side, we have the, the, the cluster's definition as YAML. In the middle portion, we, we have the management cluster. And on the right-hand side, we have the resulting clusters that are created or the tenant clusters. So everything starts with a definition of a cluster. And this is created using YAML. This is essentially like you would declare the, the applications that, that run within Kubernetes, but for your cluster. The actual YAML is made up of a number of different kinds. And on the left-hand side, you can see a color-coded diagram that represents this. So the purple is kinds that are uh, provided to us by Cluster API as an upstream project. And then the, the, the pink and the orange are imp uh, implemented by our providers. So essentially, you have to start with that. You have to create your, your, your cluster and the, uh, its definition as, as YAML. This is applied then to a management cluster. So this is a core concept to Cluster API. You have to have a management cluster where you apply these definitions into. The role of the management cluster then is to, to run the controllers from, from the various providers and from Cluster API as well, and provision the clusters, the tenant clusters on the right-hand side. So essentially, this is, this is a two-step process. So the first step is it provisions the infrastructure in the target environment. So whether that is 
creating the Azure VMs or within AWS, creating VPCs and, and EC2 instances. So the provider will need to, to provision that infrastructure first for, for Kubernetes to run on. Then a bootstrap provider is, is used to then to, to, to bootstrap Kubernetes on that infrastructure and create the cluster for you. So you can see within it, the management cluster, you can see the color coded uh, representations of the various controllers for the different providers and also cluster API itself. When a cluster is provisioned, essentially it will also store a kubeconfig for that uh, cluster within the management cluster. And you can then use that to connect to, to the newly created cluster. So what is Kappa? First and foremost, Kappa is an infrastructure provider. What that means is it will provision the AWS infrastructure that is required to run a Kubernetes cluster within AWS. Um, it provisions the infrastructure in an opinionated way. So you don't have to specify every, every aspect of, of the infrastructure. You can just let the provider take that opinionated view on what infrastructure it should create. Obviously that doesn't fit everyone's needs. So you, you can bring your own infrastructure. So you can uh, provision your infrastructure via some other means like Terraform or, or Crossplane and, and plug in the details of that into the Kappa manifests. When creating clusters with, with Kappa, you can create two types of clusters essentially. So one we call unmanaged, and that is a basically an EC2 instance space with and Cube ADM bootstrapped. And more recently, you can create what we call managed clusters, which are essentially EKS clusters under the cover. So going back to the diagram we saw previously. So what I've taken here is essentially the representation again with, uh, with the purple representing the, the, the cluster API resource kinds and overlaid that with the, the Kappa resource kinds. Now this doesn't show every single resource kind that you, you, you can use within Kappa, but it shows you uh, as representation. Main things to note here is uh, on the left-hand side, all clusters are provisioned with a set of credentials and this, this will be covered a bit later on within the talk. Then when we come to the cluster, we, we have an AWS cluster representation. One thing to note here is when you're using a managed cluster, the AWS managed control plane represents the infrastructure and the control plane, which is, which is slightly different to an unmanaged cluster. If we look towards the bottom of the diagram, you see representations for the actual worker nodes. Um, in this diagram, we, we have machines and machine pools, but they might also be machine deployments. And what you can see from this is within Kappa, the resource kinds are AWS machine, AWS machine pool, and AWS managed machine pool. And you'll see for managed clusters that sits across all of this is a bootstrap type. And this is essentially for, for managed clusters. This is called EKS config. Yeah, um, and um, now I'm gonna mention about a command line utility called Cluster AWS ADM uh, that we publish with our releases. Uh, it has some help, helper functions for Kappa. Uh, for example, Cluster AWS ADM bootstrap command manages uh, identity and access management objects like uh, roles, policies, and these are uh, used by clusters and Kappa controllers. Also, after every Kubernetes release, we build and publish AWS images, AMIs, using another Kubernetes subproject called uh, Image Builder. And uh, these AMIs comes with packages um, that's needed to bootstrap the node. Uh, by default, when you create a Kubernetes cluster with a specific version, Kappa picks the right image uh, depending on the version um, from, uh, from an AWS uh, account and to list uh, all available AMIs for specific Kubernetes versions and OS distributions, you can use cluster AWS ADM AMI list command. As a side note, by the way, um, we also support custom AMIs uh, created by users. On the Kappa managed EKS side, we have cluster AWS ADM EKS command to list uh, available and installed add-ons. Yeah, so uh, let's talk about some uh, new features uh, of Kappa. So uh, in general, we release minor releases uh, every six months or so, and a patch release almost every month. Uh, 
We are currently at uh, version 0.6 release, which was released last September. And I'm gonna mention about some new features in uh, 0.6 release, uh, which is uh, common for both managed and unmanaged clusters. The first one is multi-tenancy. Uh, previously, Kappa controller used to use same uh, set of credentials. It is initialized with to uh, reconcile um, all 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 the workload clusters, and this was not uh, suitable for especially large organizations, uh, where uh, they would prefer to run their management cluster in a management um, AWS uh, account and. Uh, each team has their own AWS accounts to run their workload clusters. So we introduce a multi-tenancy support with this release. Uh, Kappa can now do a, an IAM role assumption at runtime on a per cluster basis, and each uh, workload cluster can pick and choose uh, a different principle to be used during reconciliation of that cluster. And uh, you see the uh, CRDs we introduced uh, to support multi-tenancy, uh, different kind of uh, principles, controller principle, role principle, and static principle. Also, we have a new controller for backward compat compatibility for the existing clusters because uh, we need to create a controller uh, principle uh, uh, to make the previous clusters work, continue to work. Uh, and the next uh, feature is AWS Meshing Pools. So we added this feature with this release uh, and it is responsible for creating and managing AWS auto scaling groups using uh, launch templates. So users uh, don't have to manage individual me meshes. Uh, so let's continue with our demo. Right, so uh, before even creating our management cluster with Kappa and Kappa controllers, uh, we need to create some IAM resources and we use uh, cluster AWS ADM for this. We create, as you see here, um, a cloud formation stack with all the necessary um, roles, um, instance profiles and policies. And these resources can be customized by passing a, a config file to, to cluster AWS ADM. Uh, in Stemo, uh, I'm going to show a use case where a management cluster is running on a management AWS account. And a team has a different account uh, that wants to bootstrap a workload cluster using a workload role. So on the left here, you see a, I created a management role. Uh, this uh, role will be used to bootstrap our management cluster. So our cap capital controllers will use this role. Uh, you see uh, this management role uh, has the necessary permissions to manage AWS resources for our clusters like EC2, ELB, etc. Uh, on the uh, on the right hand side, you see uh, the workload rod. This is the workload AWS cluster. Uh, sorry, the uh, workload AWS account. I created the workload role here, uh, which uh, can be assumed by the management role on my management AWS account. Uh, it also has the necessary permissions to reconcile the resources necessary for an AWS cluster. Here you see. Uh, let's see how we represent these roles in our workload cluster manifest. Uh, this is a simplified version of the workload cluster. You see a controller principle here, which, is, uh, which represents the principle our management cluster is bootstrapped with. Uh, in our case, this is the management role in our management account. And then this uh, role principle represents the workload role on uh, our workload AWS account. We also provide details um, about uh, how this role will be assumed with source principle. Yeah? For our case, we want a management role to assume this workload role. So we added this controller principle as source um, principle ref here. So uh, for the sake of time, I already created our management cluster and a, a workload cluster. Let's see uh, what um, controllers our management cluster has. 
so these are the all, these are all the Kappa and Kappa controllers in their own uh, namespaces you see here. Let's check out uh, our cluster objects. Uh, we have a, a Kappa cluster that refer to the infrastructure provider's cluster object, which is AWS cluster for us. And here in the AWS cluster object, we specify infrastructure specific things such as networking. Uh, and also we provide a principle ref here. Uh, this, this principle ref will be used to create infrastructure resources for this AWS cluster. Let's take a, a quick look at the resources created by uh, Kappa for a workload cluster. So here you see uh, a VPC created for the demo cluster. And when we check our subnets, we uh, Kappa controller created a public and private subnet uh, private um, mostly control planes and workload nodes um, are located in the private subnet and load balancer is located in the public subnet and but these are all configurable we create some road, road table rules net gateways security groups etc and if we go to our ec2 dashboard we see the api server that that came up on the public subnet with uh, let's check the instance with our single control plane instance so when we check our running instances this is our control plane uh, workload control plane instance uh, we also ha uh, have a security group groups created for this workload cluster here um, i'd like to show uh, one final thing in our uh, YAML file, which is uh, machine pools. So you see, this is the cluster API construct for machine pools, which refers to AWS machine pool. And here, uh, AWS has machine pool has uh, details about how we want to um, create our launch templates for auto scaling groups. If we go back to our console. So this is the machine pool created by Kappa controller with this launch template uh, with the specific instance type we provided and a uh, key pair name, etc. And when we check again our EC2 instances, this is the single instance because we, we set the desired instance to one in our machine pool uh, specifications. Uh, this finalizes our uh, demo uh, and uh, here are uh, some more features that become available with uh, 0.6 release. First one is um, uh, we added support for uh, using spot instances in Kubernetes clusters. Spot instances are uh, non-reliable EC2 instance types uh, that, that uh, are cheaper uh, and more suitable for uh, fault-tolerant uh, workloads. Uh, the second one is uh, we started watching for EC2 instance state changes uh, using uh, event bridge and simple queue services. Uh, previously, when there's a EC2 state change, Kappa was not detecting it until the next reconcile, which uh, could take up to 10 minutes. Now, when a change is detected, it triggers um, a mesh AWS measure reconcile. Also, in this release, we added support for dedicated instances, uh, which are basically EC2 instances that run on hardware uh, that are occupied by a single tenant. Uh, also, we added AWS request throttler logic uh, because AWS throttles API requests for every AWS uh, account on a per region basis. And we added a logic to stop uh, our service requests when we detect AWS starts uh, throttling us. And now I will um, reach will mention uh, about new features in EKS. So on the, on the managed side of the provider, EKS support is, is new in the 0 0.6 release. So this is still marked as experimental and you actually have to enable it explicitly via the EKS feature flag. So there's two main uh, CRDs that you need to create uh, a cluster, uh, EKS cluster. First one is AWS Managed Control Plane. So when you create a unmanaged cluster, you, you have a AWS cluster and you have a Kube ADM control plane. 
uh, within the managed side of the provider, you only have the AWS managed con control plane. It acts as both the cluster and the bootstrap provider uh, combined into one. For the worker nodes within the EKS cluster, we support three types of worker nodes. Essentially machines, which are EC2 based instances, and these are individual machines. So you individually declare the machines you want to add to the cluster. And from a declaration point of view, you use the CAPI machine uh, kind and the AWS machine kind when you're, when you're declaring these. So Def has already mentioned about machine pools and machine pools can be used within an EKS cluster. And these again are essentially EC2 auto scaling groups. Uh, from a EKS point of view, you have to use the, the machine pool CAPI declaration and also the AWS machine pool. Within the EKS side, we also have another variant of, of machine pools, and these are called managed machine pools. Uh, if, if, you, if you're aware of, of EKS and use EKS normally, these get represented within as uh, EKS node groups, essentially. Uh, to use these, you need to use, again, the, the CAPI machine pool, but then there's a different kind from a, from a capital point of view, and that is the, the AWS managed machine pool. If you want to use either, either variant of the, of the machine pool, you must make sure that you enable the, the machine pool feature flag. And you can use all three of these uh, within an EKS cluster. So you can mix and match and have different types of worker nodes within an EKS cluster. You just need to, to create the declarations and, and reference the, the, the managed control plane. So we also support per cluster IAM role creation. Uh, by default, when, when, you, when you use uh, cluster AWS ADM, it will create some default roles uh, for use with the control plane and the worker nodes. That may not be suitable for your, for your type of scenario. So you can enable via a feature flag that there is IAM role creation and then there's IAM roles per cluster. And within that cluster, you'll have an IAM role for the control plane and the worker nodes. So that's something to be aware of. Also, if you use the EKS, you, you, you'll be aware of uh, the way that you authenticate and authorize into the, into the cluster, and that's using IAM authenticator. So the AWS Managed Control Plane allows you to declaratively map users and roles uh, that will result in the, the, config, the required configuration changes within the cluster for AWS IAM Authenticator. We also recently added support for EKS add-ons. There's only one add-on at present, which is the VPC CNI, uh, but this enable, allows you to, to declare what add-ons you want within a cluster and then also upgrade the versions of those add-ons uh, in a declarative manner. We've also added support for Fargate profiles. Uh, well, this is in 0 0.65. And this allows you essentially to attach a Fargate profile to your cluster and, and, and then uh, effectively run specific pods within that Fargate profile. At the bottom of the screen, you'll see that they, uh, how you install uh, the, the, the capital provider into your management cluster. A few things to note, we, we've talked about feature flags quite a lot. There is convention about how you can enable those, those feature flags via environment variables. And in the bottom of the screen, you will see some examples of that. So what does the actual, what does the YAML look like from a, from a managed point of view, from an EKS cluster point of view? So here's two examples. On the, on the left hand side in the box uh, A, you see an example of the AWS managed control plane. So this represents the cluster and, and, and the bootstrap, like I mentioned before. I want to point out a few things here. Firstly, we have that, that principal ref, so a link to the credentials that are going to be used when provisioning this cluster, so which account and you know, which user, etc. We specify which version number uh, we, want, we want to use within the cluster. And then, as I mentioned just previously, we have this section for add-ons. So this is where you declare what add-ons you want within that cluster and the, and the specific version numbers. And this is where you would you would edit this area if you wanted to upgrade to a new version of the add-on. And finally, within, within this, this example, you can see that I'm mapping a role. I'm uh, mapping uh, the administrator access IAM role to, to the system master's uh, role within uh, Kubernetes or the group within Kubernetes. So this is where you do that declarative configuration of AWS IAM Authenticator. On the right-hand side, you'll see an example of a AWS managed machine pool. So this is very similar to what Sadef showed in at the, the demo. 
but this is just for the for the managed machine pool side of things. And you can see it's very simple. You know, we're only dismissing two two properties here, the min and the max size of that of that machine pool size. So what does the roadmap look like for, for Kappa? So we essentially have two versions of, of Kappa at present. So we have the 0 0.6 uh, release version, and this maps to the, the Kappa V1 Alpha 3 version. And you should consider this the stable option. Um, so, so use this first, especially for any production-like scenarios. We're also currently working on 0 0.7, and th this is compatible with, with Kappa V1 Alpha 4. Focus really with this is on stability and, and UX changes in the API that are eventually going to lead to the beta release or the beta graduation of, of CAPI and CAPA. When talking about these two versions, you should note that we are only going to backport bug fixes and, and security uh, vulnerabilities from 0 0.7 to 0 0.6. Uh, yeah, so uh, we are still working on uh, clarifying the features that will be in for v V0.7 release. Uh, we will continue to focus on improving stability, that's for sure. Uh, but th th these are uh, some of the features that are coming up. Uh, we, for the unmanaged side, we plan to extend our uh, spot instance support by uh, also supporting Amazon EC2 fleets and spot fleets. Also, we will verify using uh, GPU EC2 instance type as workload nodes. So for that, we will uh, probably add conformance tests uh, that uses NVIDIA GPU operator, uh, which is basically responsible for installing uh, necessary drivers for Kubernetes GPU support. And finally, we will add uh, ignition support and uh, start supporting ignition format for our bootstrap data instead of only using uh, cloud in it to run our uh, bootstrap script during uh, instance initiation. That's all on the unmanaged side. So on the managed side, uh, we were focusing on three main areas. So the first area is to implement the OIDC provider association. So this feature was recently introduced into EKS. So we're, we're implementing that so that we get to the point of having feature parity with EKS. We're looking at changing the way that we, we handle launch templates within the, the managed side. Uh, currently, we, we generate a default launch template, but we don't actually allow you or, or to, to, to configure all of the options within the launch template. So this, this will be coming along. From an API point of view, we are going to refactor the AWS managed control plane and essentially deprecate the AWS managed cluster. So currently, we, uh, the AWS Managed Control Plane has grown organically a bit in all honesty, and we're going to change it and refactor it so there's a bit more structure to it. So it's obvious when you use it, you know, what options you should be using. So how do I get started? So first and foremost, uh, try CAPI and CAPA. Um, CAPI is a project, uh, creates a quick start guide, and within that quick start, guide, you can choose and follow it through and choose which provider you want to use in the, to, to, to get you from the point of creating your management cluster to creating your first tenant cluster. Once you've done that, you can then look at the Kappa specific book that we publish. This has various topics that are specific to Kappa that, that will be useful, like different scenarios, how to contribute in you know, our release cycle and stuff like that. Then if you're still, still interested, come and look at the code, come and look at our repo. Um, it sits within the Kubernetes SIG org within, within GitHub. And so you can come and take a look at the issues, the releases, and the code. We also have our own channel within the Kubernetes Slack called cluster-api-aws. And we also have office hours that you can attend and listen to where we discuss issues and, and the roadmap. And these are bi-weekly on a Monday at 10 a.m. Pacific time or 6 p.m. UTC. So how can I contribute? So there's a number of ways you can contribute. It's not all about coding. So the first way, do you have writing skills? So every project needs documentation, you know, the quick start guides, you know, architecture diagrams and, and so on. You know, for the project to be successful, we, we need good documentation. So if you have those skills, you know, we really welcome you to come and come and join the project. Do you have product skills? You know, can you translate actual real world scenarios into requirements and issues that need to be implemented within Kappa 
you know, can you help with with prioritization with when we're planning a new release? These skills are really, really important to make sure that we deliver on what users want. Do you have coding skills? Um, you know, it's not all about actually cutting code. You know, we need people to review pull requests. We need people to investigate uh, issues and try and recreate them and, and create really useful tickets for us. Um, if you want to code, this is great. You know, we need more people to code. And you can look at the issues and see the ones that are tagged as, as a good first issue or help wanted. That's a great place to start. Uh, we also, you know, require people to, to improve our test coverage, uh, whether that is the unit tests or the end-to-end -end tests. You know, you know, there's lots and lots of other ways that you can help with this project. Um, you know, just come along and, and get involved. Thank you all for attending.